I'm here today to do my October slash Victober TBR. Um, I'm playing with a bunch of different um, setups for now because my apartment still isn't um, been unpacked. And um, so yeah, I'm, I'm filming outside on my patio, which is a really nice uh, screened in patio. So it keeps away all the bugs. And so my cat can actually hang out with me and me not, not worrying about her, you know, wandering off. So she can actually be out here um, by herself, you know, watching the birds and the squirrels. So I thought I would show her real quick. Um, before I get into books because I know me and you as well miss her uh, on camera because every time I talk I think it draws her attention and so she wants to come hang out with me and so I thought I'd show her and she has her own little um, chair or <laughs> uh, there she is um, because she's like slowly um, demolishing this this chair and so yeah I thought I would just give it to her an old camping chair yeah and so she's like watching the birds and the squirrels and um sitting right beside me. And it's actually her birthday um, on, on October 1st, and so she's the perfect, like, Halloween cat. Okay, so let's get into the books. And I will leave a link in the description below to all of um, the Victober hosts. So the first one, first prompt, is to read a Victorian female author. And so I decided to go with um, Goblin Market by Christina Rossetti. And again, sorry for the glare. Um, I, I tried filling with it, but there's not much I can do. Um, hopefully you can see this, okay. Anyway, so this is um, a book of poetry that... Um, it says it's about, let's see, um, two maidens seduced by lewd goblin men provides a startling glimpse into the depths of the Victorian psyche. Because I didn't want to just refocus on novels. I did want to mix it up with, you know, children's literature and poetry. And you'll see that um, as I try to hit these challenges. And so the second prompt is to reread a Victorian uh, book. And so I decided to go with Tess of the Durrells by Thomas Hardy. And this is um, a book I didn't really enjoy the first time I read it. It's been a number of years since I read it. And so um, I did want to give it a... Um, a second go around because um, I know there's a lot of um, worth in here. And so this is follows um, Tess, who um, is like, she's driven to this um, family of the Durvilles, um due to poverty. And so she's trying to, um, you know, um, seek solace with his family. And the family isn't um, the best. It's, uh, it says meeting her cousin Alec proves to be her downfall. Um, a very different man, Angel Claire, seems to offer her love and salvation. But Tess must, choo must choose whether to reveal her past or remain silent in the hope of a peaceful future. And so kind of like picking up from that um, book, I, um, the second, the third uh, prompt is a Victorian book under 250 pages or over 500 pages. So I thought I would, you know, um, me both those challenges. The first one is Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson. And this is a book I have never read. And I've never, I think there's a movie on it. I've never seen the movie either. But it's supposed to be a nice pick-me-up um, after reading uh, Tess. This is about a boy. And he's, um, I think it's like an adventure story. Um, and he's meeting Long John Silver. He gets him. Uh, it says, um, Jim Hawkins, who outwits a gang of murderous pirates led by the un unforgettable avatar of, of immortality, Long John Silver. And so this would be a nice, like, um, adventure story. Sorry, I can't hear my mouth. <laughs> I'm fighting the cat. Um, so, yeah, this would be a nice, like, children's adventure story. And then the, um, to meet the prompt of a book over 500 pages, there's another one I've been meaning to read forever and just haven't gotten to. And this is uh, Vanity Fair by, by William Mackey Thackeray. And this always reminds me of Gone with the Wind, um, you know, uh, Scarlet um, compared to Becky Sharp who, um, this is the only thing I really know about the novel, because I haven't read it, um, is, you know, how Becky Sharp, you know, she doesn't have a lot of scruples, and you know, she's out to, you know, seek her fortune through all means necessary, and it's, um, it says, so he's comparing her, Becky Sharp, as an orphan, um, you know, and then uh, the school, her schoolmate, Amelia Sedley, a typically naive Victorian heroine, the pampered daughter of a wealthy family, and so that would be interesting to see, you know, Zachary's um, take on a Victorian heroine and comparing her to someone who's totally different, so that, that'll be interesting. And then I thought, um, since, uh, see, number four is to um, read an under uh, an underrated Victorian book from the same year as your favorite Victorian classic. And so my favorite um, Victorian uh, work is Emily Bronte's Wuthering Heights. And so I thought, um, since this prompt mentions that I would go ahead and uh, reread it because I haven't uh, read this in a number of years. And this follows uh, Catherine and Heathcliff. And um, it's it's an interesting book because it's not just like their the story's not told through their eyes. It's told through like a, a perspective who's like twice removed. Um, and so yeah, let's see if I can give a brief description. Um, do, 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 do. It says um, Lockwood, the new tenant of Thrushcross Grange, um, situated on the bleak moors, is forced to seek shelter one night at Wuthering Heights, the home of the landlord. And so like he can get introduced um, through them of the family who lives in the area, um, he um, Heathcliff and Catherine Earnshaw, and how he Catherine, forced to choose between passionate torture Heathcliff and gentle, well-bred Edgar Linton, surrendered to their expectations for a class. As Heathcliff's bitterness 
and vengeance at its betrayal is visited upon the next generation, their innocent heirs must struggle to escape the legacy of the past. And so this is interesting because it's like not just like the two Heathcliff and Catherine, but it's also like their descendants and who is living, you know, in that next generation, you know, what what um, they're going through and like how they kind of like repeat and work through what happened in that previous generation. And then, um, so to read the underrated book from that year, it was uh, published in 1847, and I couldn't really find it un a truly underrated um, story, but this one, like on Goodreads, it has um, 4,400 ratings, and so I consider that um, underrated. And this is The Children of the New Forest, if you can see that, and it's uh, by um, Frederick Marriott, and so this says, um, describes the trials and triumphs of the four Beverly children, orphaned during the English Civil War, and forced to take refuge with a poor woodsman, woodsman in the New Forest. And so this was, yeah, published in 1847. And so it, I, when I was looking at the description, it wasn't just, it mentions for, it was for children, but from um, the way people are talking about it, it's more meant for adults um, than it is for children. It's not really a children's story. It's like kind of like the morals of um, a childhood. Um, so yeah, this will, this will be interesting. And then, so let's see, number five, the last prompt is to read a book by candlelight. And I don't have candles. I don't really, um, my cat who, um, Winnie's little partner in crime was um, Kobe, and he actually passed away. But um, he had a, he was asthmatic, and so he couldn't handle candles. And I don't really like them either, like the smell. Like, um, and so, yeah. Anyway, long story short, I thought I would just, like, you know, use my tablet or the TV and um, the television and, like, have, like, a fireplace or candles, like, on the, um, on the like, as a backdrop. Um, so for that, I'm going to, uh, for that prompt, I'm reading uh, Rural, Rural Hours by Susan Fenmore Cooper. And this is actually a nonfiction, like a, na it's a, um, a nature writing um, book. And it says, um, one of the earliest pieces of American nature writing and the first by a woman. And so I really like reading uh, nature books. And so I thought, you know, why not read the one that was like, first written by a female author? And this was published in 1850. And um, I looked it up. It's like, it's like going to follow each season. It's so like spring, autumn, fall. <laughs> and I included the first one. Yeah, no, it was basically, yeah, the four seasons. Is what it's going to cover and so then moving on from reading the victorian literature um this is what i mentioned in a previous tbr but i didn't get to it at the time this is um the peabody sisters um it's three women who indicted american romanticism by megan marshall and this um these sisters are often compared to the bronte sisters and it's like but the american um version of that it's elizabeth mary and sophia peabody um, it's the story of these remarkable sisters and their central role in shaping the thinking of their day. Um, it's, so let's see if it gives a little description um, of each of them. Because they were really um, emerged into um, and friends with a lot of authors of the time that you know we think about today. So it says, um, let's see, Elizabeth, the oldest sister, was a mind on fire thinker, a powerful influence on the great writers of the era, Emerson, Hawthorne, and Thoreau among them. She also published some of their earliest works. It was Elizabeth who prodded these newly minted transcendentalists away from Emerson's individualism and toward a greater connection to the others. Uh, Mary, the um, second sister, was a determined and passionate reformer who finally found her soulmate in the great educator, Horace Mann. And then Sophia, the third sister, was a painter who won the admiration of the preeminent society artists of the day. She married Nathaniel Hawthorne, but not before Hawthorne threw the delicate dynamics among the sisters into disarray. Yeah, this will be a really interesting um, book around that time period. A novel. Not, not novel. Oh, my gosh. I cannot talk. Um, <laughs> biography. Okay. So then moving on to other like, autumn uh, reads is the one I see, saw on Sarah's um, channel, Seeked in Books. And this is Autumn Alibi by Jennifer David Hess. And I've read a couple from this series, but this one is just coming out. And it's, like, perfect for this time of the year. And it's, like, a part of the Wiccan Wheel mystery. It's kind of like a cozy mystery, um, and it's like uh, the main character, Kelly Milani. It's um, the Wiccan uh, element of this. It isn't like witchcraft, like wave a wand kind of thing. It's more like using herbs and stones to help her, kind of like guide her into solving the mystery. And so then another one I'm going to be reading is like a YA children's um, book, The Dreadful Tale of Prosper Reading, reading by Alexander Bracken. And I just love this cover. You can see it, okay? Um, this is the first book in Pro the Prosper Reading series, and it says Prosper is the only unexcep unexceptional Reading in his old and storied family history. That is until he discovers the demon living inside him. Turns out Prosper's great-great-great 
something your grandfather made and then broke a contract with a male factor, a demon who exchanges fortune for eternal servitude, and really enough, for a 4,000-year-old Alastor, isn't exactly the forgiving type. Um, so yeah, this would be like a fun uh, romp <laughs> adventure story. And so then, and going from that, I'm going to be reading uh, this thriller, Watching You, by Lisa Jewell. And I've heard quite a people talk about this on BookTube, and um, it doesn't seem to have many um, negative reads. It seems to be all um, very positive. And so it says, um, Melville Heights is one of the nicest neighborhoods in Bristol, England, home to doctors and lawyers and old money academics. It is not a source of, it is not the sort of place where people are brutally murdered in their own kitchens. But it is the sort of place where everyone has a secret and everyone is watching you. And so this is kind of reminding me of, um, oh, I can't think of the name of it. Um, uh, like one of those, like, um, I'm horrible with films and all that, but um, Hitchcock, it reminds me of like the Hitchcock film. And I can't think of the name of it. I'm sure a lot of you are knowing about like the one that's, um, where it's like a, a, a guy um, gets injured and so he's like stuck in his apartment. And so he's like viewing the rear, rear window, the rear, I think it's rear window, where he's like viewing um, his neighbors and what's going on with them and like um, through his um, apartment. And so this kind of reminds me of that. Um, and so then I'm also going to be reading um, a biography of Thomas Cromwell, A Life by Jeremiah McCulloch, because um, I want to read um, Wolf Hall and that, um, that series for the new book that's going to be coming out in the spring. And so before I read that, I want to read about, get to know uh, Thomas Cromwell um, a bit before diving into the novel. So I, I kind of, you know, have a sense of history and, and wh who who was that the character she's going to be using um, in her books. And the last book is one I recently saw. I can't remember whose channel I saw it on. Um, and this, this cover just looks really good. The Dark Days Club by Allison Goodman. And yeah, this cover is like very intriguing for me. And it's the first book in the Lady Helen series. And it's set in 1812. And it says, on the eve of 18-year-old Lady Helen Rex Rexwell's presentation to the Queen, one of her family's housemates disappears, and Helen is drawn into the shadows of Regency London. There she meets Lord Carlson, one of the few who can stop the perpetrators. Um, a cable of demons infiltrating, infiltrating every level of society. There she asks for his help when his reputation is almost as, um, oh my, I can just die. So yeah, against his reputation. Um, so yeah, I guess that means I'm finished talking. Good, good thing I, it died right um, when I was talking about that last book. So yeah, these are all the books I'm going to be reading uh, for October. I am so glad for this, you know, cooler, cooler weather that's coming because I'm just like dying out here sweating. <laughs> um, but but yes, um, yeah. Let me know what um, all of you are going to be all of you are going to be reading, and I think I should sign off before I get any more wrangly or tongue tied. Um, so yes, I'll see you soon. Thanks for two.